You are human, made from carbon that was born in the heart of a dying star that travelled light years through space, that was previously part of countless other materials, other life forms, maybe even alien life forms. Those carbon atoms form the roughly 37.2 trillion cells that comprise the human body, although that's only the current estimate. Every single one of those cells will replace itself within 7 to 10 years from now. You are not the matter that makes up your cells then, but the information that they carry, the programming that transforms that stardust into living matter. Most of those cells contain a perfect blueprint of your body, an identical genetic code stored within the nuclei, the most efficient form of data storage we know. A single gram of DNA could potentially store 250 petabytes of information. That's 215 million gigabytes. But these cells don't all act the same. Each cell knows how to behave according to its location in the human body, thanks to gene expression. Different genes are active at different locations in the body, allowing the bone cells to act like bone cells and brain cells to act like brain cells, allowing us to negotiate with our genetic destiny. Any two people share roughly 99.9% .9 of the same genetic code, but that small 0.1% is enough to account for more than 3 million differences. So different are we that there are muscles that only exist in a portion of the population. 20% of the population lack the triangular abdominal muscles called the pyramidalis, for example. Each of us carry mutations that make us entirely unique, unprecedented. We're all X-Men, and in rare cases, these differences can have far-reaching consequences. Consider the rare individuals born with mutations on both MSTN genes that can build up to 100% more muscle mass than average humans. What is your unique variation? And yet so related are we that if you go back to between 5300 and 2200 BC, you reach the genetic isopoint, a time in history where every single individual on the planet today shares the exact same ancestors. We are at least 50th cousins. You may even be carrying relatives in your own body. Some people, called chimera, carry more than one set of DNA. This can happen when a twin is absorbed by its sibling's embryo in the womb. Go back much further, and we find that we are related to every single animal on the planet too. We all come from Luca, the last universal common ancestor that emerged four billion years ago. Or do we? There are those out there that believe that there may be an entirely different species living on this planet that does not share our genetic heritage, a shadow biosphere that could be hiding in Earth's most inhospitable places, perhaps even its magma. If this were ever discovered to be true, that life form would be just as different from us as an extraterrestrial life form. You are a human with a brain comprised of over 100 billion brain cells called neurons and 125 trillion synapses in the cerebral cortex alone. That's more than 1,500 times the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. It's no wonder that the human brain is hailed as the most complex known object in the universe, and it sits inside your skull. Be careful with it. We know now that the human brain has a nearly unlimited ability to change and adapt in response to environmental cues. So plastic is the human brain, in fact, that were you to lose an entire half of your brain in what's known as a hemispherectomy, the remaining half would adapt to take on the jobs of the missing portion. Hemispherectomy patients very often retain the vast majority of their cognitive functions with just half their brain. Were you to lose your sight, you could train your hearing to the extent that you may develop echolocation. That means that you can navigate with sonar by using clicking noises like a bat. The human brain is so powerful that gifted individuals throughout history have developed equations so accurate as to predict the shape of the universe itself at any point in time. We have no idea how the brain generates our experience of consciousness, or even truly how to define consciousness at all. You are a human. A collaboration, not a single organism, but a superorganism made from other species. Those species are the bacteria that live inside our bodies and perform crucial symbiotic roles. 
They produce neurochemicals and hormones to alter mood. They break down food. They battle among themselves in order to, we hope, fend off harmful invaders and keep us in constant balance. Even the mitochondria that reside inside our cells, that are considered as much a part of us as our very bones, are in fact the evolved form of an entirely separate alpha proteobacteria that lived over 3.5 billion years ago. And so it is that our mitochondria have their own entirely different set of DNA. You are human, capable of complex, dynamic and powerful movement, a member of a species that is able to mimic nearly every other species on the planet. That movement is infinitely more complex than we inherently recognise. When you send a signal to your bicep, it will innovate 774 motor units, delivering the precise amount of force required to execute the movement. Except that we are only ever able to engage a fraction of these muscle fibres at a time. Estimates suggest that even trained athletes only ever utilise 50% of their motor units, and those are mostly the smaller, less powerful kind. This restraint mechanism exists for self-preservation. We are too powerful for our own good. Were we able to contract every fibre at once, we would be able to leap high into the air. Stories of crisis strength suggest that we gain this ability in response to dire need, giving rise to urban myths of mothers raising cars off the ground to save their children. Or Viking berserker warriors that could turn the tides of war single-handedly. As it is, a trained boxer is capable of delivering around 5,000 newtons of force. This relies on a specific network of muscle activation called the Serape effect and is equal to half the force that a one-ton car exerts on the ground. A baseball pitcher can throw a ball at over 100 miles an hour. But muscles are not just machines used for force generation. Muscles are secretory organs that release complex chemicals to alter countless other processes throughout the body. And they are sensory organs that provide us with feedback about the world around us through muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs. Every part of your body is infinitely more complex than it appears at first pass. We combine this with information from our other senses, our sight and sense of balance, equilibrioception, in order to generate a mental model of our entire body and where it is in space at any given time. This tells us precisely how much force we need to generate on each joint simultaneously to stabilise or mobilise and achieve the desired outcome. This is done with the help of fascia, a complex cat suit of connective tissue that spans the entire body and even enters and fills the muscles themselves. The fascia, observed by Leonardo da Vinci, was originally discarded as an inert film wrap until recent studies revealed it to be much more, a substance that contains its own muscle cells and nerves and that can even help to convey force from one muscle to another across vast distances throughout the body. All this information forms our perceptual motor landscape this is not formed of individual senses, but rather a coalescence of data from multiple inputs that together create an impressionistic picture of the world around us. This is multi-sensory integration. This is not the truth, but the lie we need to believe in order to enhance our chances of survival. And in fact, it is delayed by the time it takes for the last signal to reach our brain, such that an artificial snapshot can be created by combining that information into a single unit of now. A psychological present. Neuroscientists now use mathematical models to better understand the brain. Many describe the brain as a Bayesian prediction machine, a system designed to anticipate changes in the world around us, to predict the most likely outcomes and to thus allow us to move in the most useful ways. A batter cannot react to a baseball being thrown at them, they can only anticipate that movement based on telegraphing and other minute cues and countless prior experiences of trial and error. Consider that the smartest AIs created by humans are capable of beating chess masters, but our best robots can't even come close to matching a toddler in a task as simple as picking up an orange. Neuroscientist Daniel Wolpert believes that the brain exists for movement, and proponents of embodied cognition believe that without a physical experience of the world around us, we would be unable to internalise concepts and ideas, unable to think. You are human, an adaptoid, mutable, constantly changing. Human bones that appear so rigid are in fact banks for minerals that are constantly broken down and reabsorbed. 
So plastic is the brain that our life experience even changes the way we perceive the world around us and handle the very process of thought. Wrestlers are more inclined to use their brain's motor regions when performing tasks such as mentally rotating 3D objects, as compared with the general population. We can grow new capillaries, blood vessels, to supply the most often used muscles with more blood. This can increase that muscle plasticity. And our fascia can remodel itself in response to common patterns of movement. We can even change the expression of our DNA, altering which genetic code is active and which is dormant, resulting in profound changes that we can even pass on to our offspring. Thanks to this changeability, we are shaped by our environments. Our limitless potential is forged into something powerful and concrete as we learn to move optimally through space and time. This change is arranged around the interplay of organism, intent and environment. We crave this learning process. We are information processing machines. We have dopamine pathways built into us that makes us yearn for challenge, stimulation and growth. This is what play is. The difference? Humans are the only species on the planet that can change their environments to this extent. When we choose to train, we change the environment to elicit the changes we want, to tap into more of that unlimited possibility. Many humans have accomplished incredible things this way, things that were once seemingly impossible. You are human. You are limitless. Remember that when things seem tough. Your entire body is built to adapt and thrive in the hardest of times. You're capable of incredible things. You're made from primordial matter, born in the heart of a dying star. You got this. And so it is that I also believe training should encompass much more than just curling and squatting. Your body is capable of so much more, built for so much more, and you can grow in every single one of these areas. Why not take that same growth mindset and apply it to every aspect of your performance? If you like this philosophy, then be sure to stick around and check out some of my other videos. I have discussions on everything from how to increase your working memory, to how to hold your breath longer, to how to perform cool calisthenics moves. If you want a ready-made training program that can help you develop much more than just your bench numbers, then check out my ebook and training guide, Super Functional Training. That's a PDF and much more that you can find in the description down below. There's a discount on right now while we're all struggling with the pandemic. I also have a book available for pre-order called Functional Training and Beyond. That's a detailed look at the concept of training for real life and sports, and you'll find that in the description too. Thanks so much for watching this one, guys. I was trying something a bit different here. Let me know what you think. I discovered so much awesome stuff about the human body while researching these posts, that I thought it could be cool to put all of that together into something a little motivating. I thought that might be fitting for the new year. If you did enjoy it, then please leave a comment, like it, share it around, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. All that helps me out immensely and I massively appreciate your support. I hope you all had a great break over the holidays and that 2021 is amazing. I think we all deserve it to be a really good one. And guys, stay tuned because I've got another exciting and different video on the way next. It might take a little bit longer than usual, but I'm working on the new Batman training program for 2021. It's called the I Am Vengeance Workout. Thanks a ton for watching this one, guys. And bye for now.